This demonstration of the catalog, Gaia catalog of nearby stars, taking the precise motions provided by the Gaia mission, and see what happens over the next 500 million years. That's two orbits of the Sun. Immediately you see that most stars tend to follow the circular orbit, but there also you can see some red and yellow stars that do not appear to follow the circular motion of the majority of objects. This is because these are very old stars that form part of the halo and thick disk of the Milky Way. They orbit the galaxy in non-planar orbits, randomized with respect to the galactic plane. Another particular are the blue groups of stars, which are moving groups or clusters. The largest of these clusters are the, the Hyades and the Coma cluster. Uh, we see these groups stay together during the two evolutions and that's because they are gravitationally bound and they continue with the more orbital motion of the original molecular cloud from where they were formed. In this last view you can see these blue points coming by and you can also see the, the red and the yellow stars are now very randomized with respect to the general movement. Again, we look at the same motion but a side view. The galaxy in this, in this perspective has a sombrero form. This is a known warp feature of the galaxy that was known before Gaia but whose parameters have been better determined with Gaia. The red and blue old star, the red and yellow old stars can be seen again having their own orbits that are predominantly out of the galactic plane. And another prominent feature that you see now is the banding that occurs during the full two periods. These are structures in the kinematical space that is only possible to see thanks to the exquisite precision of Gaia. Their origin is tied up to the, to the origin and evolution of the galaxy and one of the big challenges for astronomers is to explain these structures in a consistent way. At the end of the two revolutions we see that the objects within 100 parsecs are spread throughout the galaxy. This is important because it shows that even though the Gaia catalogue of nearby stars is only based on the stars within 100 parsecs, the objects in our neighborhood come from throughout the galaxy. In this last slide you see this very striking banding of the objects as they orbit the, uh, the, the, um, the center of the galaxy, the bulge in the center of the galaxy. In this last video of the same period, we look from above the galaxy while the other two videos are playing to the right. The stars near the Sun start as a point within the Milky Way. To put things into perspective, if we equate the size of the galaxy to the Earth, the region we are looking at, the, the Gaia catalog of near nearby stars, would occupy just a circle of about 40 kilometers. The blue clusters that stay together and the stream in the other objects is very clear, is very evident. Uh, especially as you, the, the tide comes back towards the same position. Also clearly seen uh, are the red and yellow colored objects that do not follow the plane but go in and out of the plane. The large dispersion of the objects in a circular stream around the galaxy is very evident as the stars travel at different speeds and in different orbits. We see that after two revolutions the majority of stars are smeared out throughout a circle roughly the size of the of the solar circle roughly the size of the orbit of the sun